When we compare the Milankovic cycles with durations of between 26 to 100,000 years, to the present flicker of time, that is the 168 years spanning modern climate change, it is quite logical to conclude that it is not possible for processes that take thousands of years to complete to have any influence on global average temperature increases of modern climate change. However, if we bear in mind the saying that when the facts change, I change my mind, we will present a series of hard scientific facts that may well cause us to change our minds. The first fact is that it is indisputable that the Milankovitch cycles have been responsible for climate changes taking place over much shorter intervals than the periodicity of eccentricity, obliquity and precession. We can start 2.58 million years ago at the inception of the Quaternary Ice Age. As with all climate change, many factors had to be involved, but the fundamental cause of the Quaternary Ice Age, during which we still live, was the combined effect of the Milankovitch cycles. As this seminal paper concludes, from the Quaternary onwards, regular cycles of alternating cold glacial periods and warmer interglacial periods became normal on our planet, right up to the present. Until 800,000 years ago, these cycles had a periodicity of around 40,000 years. This aligns with that of obliquity. This also aligns with expectations, but we will take note. The cycles persisted for nearly 1,800,000 years. However, approaching 800,000 years ago, the mid-Pleistocene transition took place. The periodicity of the climate cycles changed from 40,000 to approximately 100,000 years. This, of course, aligns with that of eccentricity. And again, we take note. This chart, reading from left to right, plots the cycles from 800,000 years ago to the start of our present Holocene period in terms of global average temperature deltas in degrees Celsius. Throughout that time, the Earth was either in a glacial period which saw sustained ice on the Northern Hemisphere continents and lasted for around 100,000 years. Or it was in a much shorter warm interglacial period where the ice caps receded and there was little or no Northern Hemisphere continental ice. We live in such an interglacial now, the Holocene. An important point to make is that it is widely acknowledged that while the periodicity of these 100,000 year cycles is largely determined by eccentricity, the overall characteristics owe much to the combinations of all the Milankovitch cycles. In particular, it is the interplay of precession and obliquity that influences the duration of interglacials. So when we look at the duration of interglacials, not only are they shorter than glacials, but they vary to a greater extent. As can be seen, all durations are less than the 26,000 years of precession. Apart from MIS-11, which approximately equals that of 26,000 years. The shortest duration is between 5.1 to 6.5 thousand years. So, if we use the mean years, we can note climate change impacts of between 6.5 to 27.7 thousand years, with the shortest being 6.5 thousand years. 
For even shorter durations, we can move to the Holocene. This chart to be read from left to right shows temperature anomalies up to the start of modern record keeping. Anomalies are relative to the 1961 to 1990 reference period. It shows temperatures rising after the last glacial period, remaining reasonably stable for thousands of years, then falling for thousands of years, until just over 2,000 years ago. From there, global average temperature continued its downward trend then starts to rise. The IPCC notes that these temperature movements are related to the Milankovic cycles, and in particular the last 2,000 years. We therefore add the period of 2,000 years to our list. We have shown examples of where the Milankovitch cycles have been responsible for climate changes taking place over durations as short as 2,000 years. We take the next step in our discussion by observing that the Milankovitch cycles are not uniform. They are non-linear. A non-linear process does not progress or develop smoothly from one stage to the next in a logical way. Instead, it makes sudden changes or wobbles. It has to be said that studies on the Milankovitch cycles, including that of this channel, often give the impression that the cycles are uniform and behave like well-oiled clockwork in a smooth, linear manner with no sudden movements or changes. This is not the case. And this is fundamentally because the cycles are part of our solar system, which is also not uniform, which the authors of this study identify as the main limitation on their attempts to refine their solutions for the Milankovitch cycles. Our solar system consists of the Sun the planets, dwarf planets, dozens of moons, and millions of asteroids, comets, and meteoroids, all are bound together by gravity, so that the two largest planets, Jupiter and Saturn, have an effect on the Earth's orbit and hence produce climatic fluctuations. This effect on the Earth's orbit, its eccentricity, has a periodicity of only 11.86 years. This is just one example of the non-uniformity of our solar system and hence the Milankovitch cycles. In just a while, we will demonstrate how the overall interactions of the solar system's planets and moons result specifically in the non-linear behaviour of a Milankovitch cycle. But first, for a full understanding, it will be useful to see an example of how combinations of such non-linear processes can interact with each other to produce abrupt changes to the climate. We also need to understand that the state of the climate at any given time depends not only on short-term causes, but also on an accumulation of historical events. And although these events may take place gradually over thousands of years, they can accumulate so that the Earth's climate is taken to a breakpoint or threshold where many other factors can amplify change into a sudden transition. We can take an arbitrary point in time during the last 2,000 years of the present Holocene interglacial period to illustrate this complex state of affairs. Over the time during the last 2,000 years, the Milankovitch cycles will have been exerting their influence on temperature trends and ice cover, so that the ice cover on the Antarctic will be at a certain level and ice cover on Greenland will be at another level. 
Both will interact to influence the amount of irradiance that is reflected into space. This is known as the albedo effect. The Earth's temperature will fluctuate in line with this, and not in a simple, uniform way, as implied by the term global average temperature, but in a non-uniform, complex manner, dictated by the status of each of its various climate zones. And the amount of irradiance received by each climate zone will be subject to the status of the Milankovitch cycles at that time. This non-uniform distribution of irradiance produces varying levels of sea surface temperature across the 70% of the planet that is covered by the oceans. El Niño and La Niña are complex weather patterns that result from variations in the ocean temperatures. Their cyclic periodicity is irregular, that is non-uniform, but events occur on average every two to seven years. Similarly, variations in sea surface temperatures impact the flow of the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC, which has a major influence on the climate. The AMOC is characterised by a northward flow of warm, salty water in the upper layers of the Atlantic, and a southward flow of colder water in the deep Atlantic. The flows of these and many other ocean currents influence how carbon dioxide interacts with the ocean's phytoplankton. As atmospheric carbon dioxide is absorbed by the oceans, phytoplankton use the carbon dioxide and sunlight to photosynthesize. In the process, they produce oxygen and help to remove about one third of the atmospheric carbon dioxide. The varying levels of Earth's coverage of trees and greenery also impacts the absorption of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. While these various non-uniform climate forces interact with each other internally to the planet, externally the various chaotic components of the solar system such as the gravitational pull of Jupiter and Saturn, cause further perturbations, which interact with the Sun's activity, which again is non-linear and fluctuates with, for example, massive solar flares and the approximately 11-year sunspot cycle. The interactions of this network of climate change causal factors perhaps taking place historically over many years, can eventually cause one or more thresholds to be crossed and an abrupt change to take place. As well as being an integral part of this network of non-linear, non-uniform process, as stated previously, the Milankovitch cycles are themselves non-linear and are subject to very short-term perturbations. The Moon plays a part in the non-linear behaviour of precession. This video, produced by NASA, depicts the movement of precession. You will notice this wobbly line it shows a close-up of the detailed movements of the spin axis. The close-up indicates a set of much smaller, shorter and quite abrupt motions. It shows that precession, as it goes through its full cycle of 26,000 years, is also undergoing fluctuations on much shorter timescales, ranging from just days two years. This non-uniform motion is driven by the gravity of the Moon and the Sun acting on the Earth's equatorial bulge. We are reaching the end of this video and it has been shown that the Milankovitch cycles are not long, smooth, uniform processes 
but are instead made up of much shorter, non-uniform sets of processes, which can combine with the many other non-linear processes and interactions and historical events to cross a breakpoint or threshold and produce a sudden transition. It is therefore proposed that the facts presented will cause the viewer of this video to adjust the initial position and accept that it is possible for processes that take thousands of years to complete, and hence the Milankovic cycles, to have an influence on the global average temperature increases of modern climate change. As much of the discussion has focused on the non-uniformity of the solar system and the Milankovic cycles, it is appropriate to end on a quote from Bertrand Russell on the dangers of believing nature to be uniform. The man who has fed the chicken every day throughout its life at last wrings its neck instead, showing that more refined views as to the uniformity of nature would have been useful to the chicken.